Voila, everybody! Welcome back to my channel. Let me just set this down for a little bit. Mm. Last week, I posted this Instagram reels about how I just got my new laptop from work. I haven't had a chance to really setting up the computer, so today, since I am setting up my computer, it will be cool to show you guys some of my top applications that I use on MacBook Pro, and also as well as how exactly you can set up your terminal. My name is Vicky May, and I am a full-time software engineer living in New York City. And in this channel, you are going to learn so much about how to learn to code, web development, and all things related to tech. This channel is mostly just tech and maybe lifestyle, but currently I am just focusing on tech. It's a very educational channel. So if you like this kind of stuff, maybe consider subscribing. So when I first got my computer, the first thing that I do is basically clearing up some unnecessary applications that I'm not gonna use out of sight, out of mind. Once I clear that out of the way, the second thing that I'm going to do is basically installing all the applications that I need. So since I would be using this computer mainly just for work, one thing that I definitely would need is iTurn2 instead of using um, the built-in Mac terminal. It just has so much more customizations on iTurn2 and I'm gonna show you a few of them. I also use VS Code for my main text editor. It's just my defaults and I also will show you some of my favorite extensions within the VS Code. Um, so for note taking, I use Notion and for conference calls, I use Zoom. Um, for just communications with coworkers, I use Slack and that's about it. So one thing that I did forgot to mention is the default settings. I didn't realize that Mac actually has a preset way to design the finder, which is not very intuitive. So right here, right now, as you can see, you don't have a sidebar. It's just really hard to tap through anything really. Um, so quickly, I'm just gonna go into the preferences of the finder. I wanted to make sure that these settings are designed to be how I would like my Mac to be set up. I do want to have the sidebars and these are the options and I definitely wanted my username um, on the sidebar as well. Another thing that is important is show all the file names extensions. So I think this is fine um, for the setup of it. I'm gonna close this. I use iTerm2 and just go into Google and download iTerm2. There are a few things that are pretty cool about Terminal just in general and I'm gonna show you. The first thing is PWD which kind of just knows where your directory is currently. LS is to show the list of um, files and folders that are in this current directory. So one thing that I do think that it's important is by downloading Homebrew. Try to use this command. Let me see if I can just do this. Run this command. It will just download Homebrew. Oh, it just looks like it's quickly installing everything, but Homebrew is basically a package manager and there's a lot of package managers out there. There is NPM, so Homebrew is one of them. A lot of the um, Linux or Mac probably needs to require to install Homebrew. So I would say as soon as you get a brand new computer, just go to .brew <laughs> .sh installations and just go here and basically just I would just copy and paste the code that they tell you hey do this the first step and then the second step yada yada and then just install this thing in your terminal this is already installed which is great if you think this is way too much of words you can just do clear and then enter I'll clear out the terminal for you so I do like to kind of customizing a little bit about my um, iTerm2 it's not a preference I just don't like a big fan of this black and white situation. I usually like to be a little bit more colorful. And the theme that I usually use is the 
one called Oh My Zish, unless you're terminal like never before. Oh My Zish. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to copy this command, paste it over here, and see if it works. Yay, it works! Once you see this really cool, like, colorful logo of their theme, you know that you already have it. One of the ways is to set up the themes and you want to look for this file. And the quickest way for you to look for this file will be in your folder finder, or you could probably just open it up on your terminal just like this. Okay, so now we have the file being open over here. It's a stuff, you know, a lot of stuff, but don't get stressed about all this stuff. It's super easy. We just gotta kind of follow the instructions. For example, if you want this theme, you just want to say this theme equals. So let's just find this right now over here. We can tell that this is already set it to this theme. What I do want is to set up for a different theme. So um, you can quickly just kind of browse around over here to see what themes kind of fits into your vibe. Another really cool way is go into their preferences, um, iTerm2, and just go to preference. I'll open up this navigation and go to their tab profiles and go to colors and there's a ton of colors that you can choose. So I'm just gonna quickly set this thing up based on what I use. Okay, so this is pretty awesome. I like what I have so far. Um, no complaints right now. I do want to talk about um, my co-editor, which I am basically use VS Code for my development. A lot of people have different opinions about co-editor for one of the biggest reasons why I choose VS Code is because VS Code does have a lot of extensions and for today's video, I actually am going to show you one of my top um, VS Code extensions that you can just basically download on your VS Code. Go onto Google and just basically type VS Code download and you'll be able to download this for free. VS Code is pretty smart. It will ask you what kind of themes that you like, either a lighter themes or darker themes. I always go for a darker theme for sure. It also has a lot of different um, options where you can choose your defaults. One of my top popular one is the Solarize Dark. I really do like this turquoise color. Let's not get too crazy or dip too deep into the colors of this right now. This is your text editor where you can use it for majority of typing code, programming, and all that. Currently, we have VS Code extensions that they recommend it to you. One of the top ones that I use all the time is um, this extension called Prettier. Prettier is almost like a code formatter. Once you start typing code, it'll automatically just save in a really clean format. And this helps me a lot, especially when I am pushing my code into upstream and collaborating with my coworkers. When it comes to code review or just for the readability of your code, this is a great extension. The next one I want to talk about is ESLinked. Um, this is a pretty popular one that a lot of developers use. It's basically a library that is, well, in this extension, it's integrated into VS Code, but basically it helps you to kind of just quickly check your JavaScript code and make sure that you are not creating a lot of bugs when you were coding. So it will help you to basically have a better experience when you're writing JavaScript code. All of my coworkers who are developers who code in JavaScript uses these two extensions. And then I'm gonna show you some of the cool ones that I really like. Uh, the first one I wanna talk about is the bracelet pair colorizer. This extension is clear out these curly braces and the brackets so you can kind of tell or at least visually you can distinguish which 
open brackets match with which closing brackets. Kind of just know right away if you're missing a curly brackets or not. Um, now that I'm looking at it, this may be the more of an updated version of it. I'm trying to see, but as you can see here, the ratings are not a lot. That means that might not be a lot of people using it, but I, I can tell that there's a lot of people downloading this extension. I'm not sure, but I would still stick with this one be just because I've been using this for a very long time and I absolutely love using this extension. The next one that is called Atom Key Map, the Atom Editor shortcuts that migrated into VS Code. As you can see over here, there's a ton of these shortcuts that you can take a look at it. And I definitely would recommend um, this one if you are used to the Atom um, shortcuts. The next one is Feather Commence. Better Comments is great because it will basically color differentiating all these different types of comments that you're making in your code. It's just really great overall to be able to be colored, coded, almost your comments. So the next one is called the Color Highlights. So the Color Highlights is very useful for CSS. Um, when I'm working in CSS, it's just really helpful to be quickly seeing the exact color that you're putting the color code into your code. Um, it helps a lot if you do a lot of CSS. I don't do that often anymore, but it's still nice to have on your co-editor since I'm setting everything up. The next thing is GigLens. Um, I know a lot of people use this. It allows you to see what other people and when they committing in certain parts of the code base. So say if you clicking, you're putting cursor on this line of code, I'll show you when you committed this and sometimes I'll show you also the commit message. It's just really interesting to read through all of this and getting all these contacts. The last one is called Path Intelligence. Intelligence? Okay, so it's this one. And the reason that I like this is because sometimes when I'm writing relative path, it's really hard for me to keep track of which folder that I'm selecting to. So this gives you like a little preview over here that shows you the folder that you're tapping into. So this is very helpful. Another thing that I do wanted to mention is Geek version control and obviously different companies use this different version control system. Um, for our company, we use GitLab instead of using GitHub. I do need to set that up at some point on my computer, but probably not today. Um, I do need to kind of just spin up my development environment, download and clone all the repositories that we use at work, setting up NPMs and also like a bunch of packages that I need to install, which is kind of a private thing that I wish that I can show you guys, but I can't. If you are in interested in other things about just like coding in general, projects that you can build to practice and things like that. You can always find a ton of playlists on my channel. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye!